All right, everybody, uh, welcome again to uh, the introduction of a new instructor at Watts Atelier. It doesn't happen all that often, so it's always fun to kind of touch base um, with the newer teachers uh, when they do come around and just kind of find out a little bit more about them in case you're curious. Uh, some of you might be interested in coming to the Atelier or even taking a streaming critique class with Kira. Uh, Kira is the teacher here that we're going to be talking about. <laughs> And she's um, relatively new to the school, as, as was Alana and Evan and, and also Travis. They all kind of came in at a similar time and have, you know, blossomed into people that have become really good friends and also step into possibly, you know, teaching at the Atelier and see where that goes, because it's always an organic process. So anyway, how, how did you find the Atelier and, and what was your motivation for coming in the first place, you know, like when you first found it? Um, well, I had heard about the Atelier from a relative. Um, I lived up in Northern California before I came down here, and we have family down here. And so when I moved down here, uh, my relative mentioned that, that we lived really close to an art school that was oh. supposed to be good. So you were always interested in art? I mean, even up in Northern California, you always kind of sketched. Did you have family members that did it or anything? Uh, or? For me, it's like I've been drawing since I was a kid, and that's like all I wanted to do ever. Wow, oh, fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, and this is the fun thing. Now, any parents or any kind of, uh, you know, like a father or mother that did it? Or was it was it uh, encouraged? Or was it like, hey, you should be, you know, if you had a creative, because some parents, you know, they don't, I was really lucky to have parents that understood the creative mind and were like, yeah, you can go ahead and do that. You know, it's not a problem. I, I, I grew up in like a, an artsy kind of family, kind of that, um, uh, I don't know if you call it Waldorf, like nature, uh, crafts, and, and like knitting and, and wool cool. and that kind of stuff. So okay. It tied in with the art pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's always, um, and I think art comes in so many forms. So I always, because I see through the perspective of mostly, you know, drawing, painting, mediums like that, but, you know, cooking, culinary. So when I say, is there anyone, it's funny because I'll talk to people and it, it could be a mechanic artist. It could be some machinery or an engineer. You know, there's so many mathematical arts, you know, I mean, just, um, you know, uh, it doesn't always have to come out in the form of like sculpting and stuff. So I think all of us are really artists in our own way. I mean, we find a little area to, you know, nerd out on and <laughs> become exceptional sure. at. So when you came to the Atelier, what was your first impression? I mean, what did you feel about it? I mean, <laughs> was it too, I, I don't know, I'm curious, you know, cause I don't know if I even know the answer to that question. Um, I liked it a lot, but I will say I was intimidated the first time I poked my head in here, yeah. um, but in a good way. Um, the level of the people it's, or yeah. yeah it's very quiet very focused um, very hard-working group um, so, yeah yeah okay. yeah I get that a lot because I had a friend recently I encouraged to come here and she's a spiritual teacher and she's more like yeah you know like real mm. and she was like oh everyone's so serious and I was like yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a serious bunch man I mean we're, we're 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 kind of I mean and again that I think that reflects back to a lot of you know my uh, you know the energy that I've I carry into it is is really no nonsense hey let's get down to work let's get good and let's go mix you know make a living at this you mm. know and I think there's there's a part of that that needs to be there but I I also as I'm shifting and getting older and more mature hopefully and more wise I see a lot of need for more playfulness mm. in the process and that's another thing that I'm hoping that some of you guys can bring to it because I think I'm probably too old to be bringing that I mean maybe I don't <laughs> I know don't so. but it might be you know I mean I just you know it's it's something that um I do look for now more in myself and in people that I have around the school is that it doesn't have to quite be so rigid, you know? I mean, there's a place for that. And and again, we don't grade, we don't have a hardcore system like that. So I think in that way, it is pretty loose. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, hey, come in and get good because you want to. Sure. Not because you gotta go do homework, or I'm gonna make you yeah. grade you and check your homework. It's more um, guided by self-discipline, self-motivation. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to the question, what is your motivation for wanting to kind of go through all this kind of training? Is there a motivating impetus behind it? I'm, I'm sure there is, but what, what would that be if you wanted to share with the viewers for those of you that might come and work with you? Mm. I, I mean, my personal motivation, um, for one, I just, I really enjoy the skill building aspect and having something just to work on throughout my whole life, um, something to go back to. Um, but another part of it would be I feel like arts communication and expression and to do that effectively you need those foundational kind of drawing um, skills to do it effectively and to express yourself as a whole 
um, as much as you can. So my goal is to get as good as possible so that I can express myself as good as possible. I love that. I love that because that's what I've always felt is that it's not, you know, I used to always get that, you know, kind of kickback from people that we were too rigid and that it's going to kill the creativity of the mm-hmm. artist. And I used to always, again, rebuttal, I don't know who I heard it from, some philosopher, somebody who said that any creativity that was that fragile that it couldn't withstand a huge amount of academics is mm-hmm. not really worth crea- um, cultivating in the first place. It's just too weak. Sure. You know, it shouldn't hurt it. It only opens up doorways and opportunities for further expression. And why would you not want to know perspective? Because now you can't put people in scenes and you can't go out and do landscapes or mm-hmm. you can only do certain things, you know? So I always thought, you know, in your, especially in your younger years, if you're fortunate enough to find a good environment in your twenties mm. is just tap it out, uh, training wise, because you have the rest of your life then to explore everything, right? Your ideas, the world, you can go and paint in Venice on the street scene and mm. you can go handle almost anything, right? You can do fantasy work. You could do complicated bird's eye views, worm eye views. You can, just it opens up a huge amount of opportunity to not hamstring yourself into a box too early, sure. you know. So I love that 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 answer. Um, what what area of art is most motivating to you right now? I think I think I know the answer to this question, but but for those people who don't know you, is it you know realism, fantasy, fine art? Um, what would your ideal career scene look like if you wanted to make a career out of it? What would what would that look like? Um, I'm really interested in storytelling in art uh, and narrative stuff. So right now, illustrations definitely grab my interest. Um, but beyond that, uh, I have to kind of explore and see. Uh, I'm still discovering um, a lot of where I want to take art. Yeah, at the moment. I, know, I know some of the pieces I've seen you recently in some of the uh, illustration classes have slightly whimsical, almost child book illustration kind of mm-hmm. you know motivations or something. Maybe is that is there somewhere in that like some line of energy maybe in that area that might be of interest i don't know i mean for sure yeah um i I like very cute and whimsical kind of art so children's book illustration definitely uh, is something i'd like to try someday yeah well yeah and again not to not to to uh try to put you in a box or anything because i think um you know from what i've gathered from your personality is that you you're you know still waters run deep i mean you're really a lot deeper (laughs) i mean you're deep you know you have a lot of depth to you already and Um, and I just picked that up, uh, I think early on with you, but that'll play out in so many different cool ways. I mean, but I think, you know, um, from a teaching standpoint, since you're, you're kind of new to teaching as well, but have a, have a great aptitude for it from what I've seen. I mean, just, you know, quick sketch alone. I mean, your quick sketches are are phenomenally advanced for where you're at. Um, I know that was an area that I fell in love with early on that made me want to learn the technique because watching people take such a complicated thing as the human form and one minute, two minute, three minute consistently producing these amazing drawings with some system that I couldn't figure out because I didn't know it was a systematic uh, navigation system called the Riley method, which was heavily based on abstractions, which are heavily based on muscle rhythms and interplay of the muscles and the bones and uh, the structure of the body and, and the rhythm of it. And so that's, a complicated system to decipher. So when someone picks it up in quick sketch quickly, then it's always a um, kind of a hmm for me. You know, I kind of really think about it like that's a tough system to get. So um, that tells me a lot about the person's ability to absorb complex concepts and then to conceptualize them and use them quickly and efficiently. And that's not an easy thing to do. So that's always a big, you know, um, I wouldn't say it. It just it just like a a little light goes on for me and I go, oh, I'll have to watch that person because that's fascinating, you know. It's a way that I can kind of see how people process, you know. And it's not like a, if someone doesn't get quick sketch like that, that they're not going to be a great artist. It's just, it definitely shows me a certain um, aptitude that is fascinating to me. And for me, it was like, um, you know, I learn a lot through emulation and I don't know how you feel about, you know, Mm. if that's the way, you know, I pick up a lot through just observational. I don't really... As much as I talk when I teach and as much as I talk in general, it's not how I really learn. Mm-hmm. I would prefer to just watch. Yeah. I don't even want to, you could say nothing and I'd be fine. Mm-hmm. You know, just watch an excellent person execute and I'll mimic what I like from it, you know. So how do you find with your with your learning at the school, what was the most, some of the most challenging things that you found and some of the things that you found most maybe inspirational and easy or things that you really gravitated towards in the system that we teach? a tough question um i think challenging at the school is how quickly we have to execute drawings 
Um, even in normal header figure, just having two and a half hours or so, um, it might be less with the demo, uh, to like complete a whole drawing from life is, it's a challenge. <laughs> it <laughs> took me a long time to get there to the yeah. point where I could even pass the two value. Um, I always tell new students that I spent the first two years just getting to the two value point. Um, so I would say that's the biggest challenge. Uh, the easier parts, I don't know if I call them easy, but um, taking your gouache portrait, I think it was the second class I ever took coming here, uh, really set me up for oil painting later on. And so um, it made it a lot more fun and approachable to jump into. Well, and that's, that's what, in the school I went to, Fred Frixler from the um, California Art Institute, when he taught, uh, that was a bridge medium that he used between the charcoal and the oil mm. to help you make that transition. Because you're already learning a tonal method of drawing, which is already preparing you for painting in a really nice, efficient manner through drawing. Mm -hmm. But then there's still that jump between temperature and turning form with shape. And when you get in a very viscous medium like oil, it can be very squirrely on you. And gouache is a very matte, quick drawing, malleable uh, medium one of the only ones that will allow you to do that. That was one of the things I remember about you was I remember that gouache class like it was yesterday and you got a wall hanger first time in black and white, but it was still impressive, you know? I mean, I was like, hmm, you know, another another eyebrow raise for, mm, I'll have to keep an eye on this one. <laughs> but no, it's funny because I, I, you know, when you're teaching as an avid teacher, you, you really, you know, the successes of your students become your successes. You also become very I mean, it's not like if someone's not succeeding, you, you feel bad for them or, you, you know, it makes you mad or anything. It's just more really nice to see people getting it and mm -hmm. taking it seriously and getting good results with it and the light bulb coming on for them. So I'm glad to hear that that was, you know, kind of how you felt about that, because that was really why, why that class was designed that way and why I still teach it so rigidly yeah. in that manner, because it really should be taught that way to me. And I've had teachers in the, in the past that have taken a lot more lenient stance on teaching it that way. And it's not bad. It's just not. I, I, I used to feel very strongly about teaching that class, only me teaching that class, really. Um, and then, you know, after having 100 plus classes on the roster, you can only teach so much. Mm -hmm. And as you start getting further along, you have to pass the torch to other people in order to even keep the program going. Sure. It's impossible to do it all on your own. It's too big of a, a project now for me alone. So, um, you know, as I, as, I, as I look at the new teachers coming in, and I'm so excited for all you guys for what you're going to get from it because teaching to me has been probably single handedly the most enriching, deep learning process that I've ever been through, you know, and, and I, I would say most of my speed and efficiency has come through that almost all of it, mm -hmm. you know, why I'm able to execute under and talk and do demos and do all the stuff that I do was just from all that trench warfare teaching, you know, like being down in the triage, you know, fixing people's stuff all day, you know, okay, I got to, put a nose in really well for this person. Oh, this person's head structure has to be completely removed and put back in. This person has to, you know, it's like, it's like you, you couldn't even emulate that kind of learning mm -hmm. on your own. It's almost impossible. And so, uh, but not everybody should teach either, right? Teaching mm -hmm. is a, it's a calling. It's a, if you do it right, then it's giving a good portion of some of your best energy to other people um, altruistically. And, you know, so you have to have a strong motivation for why you want to do it. And that's one thing that I've always looked for in, in my teachers is, you know, why are you doing this? Because it is hard. It's You're going to get, I mean, you, the value of what you get out of it is priceless. But some people, it will not land well on them, you know, and they don't, they don't wear it well, you know, but you don't know sometimes until quite far in, you know. Mm. That's why, like, some of my, you know, why, you know, You've been at the school for how long now? I mean, what? I'm in my fifth year. So. Fifth year, yeah. yeah. So that's great. I mean, that's a really good amount of time to where you, if you were going to step into teaching, I think that's like one of the perfect five to seven years mm. is what it usually used to take to get a really good, someone good enough to really start teaching in, at this level because it's probably one of the most demanding styles of teaching I've ever seen. But also, I think we're probably top five in the world. I mean, and it's such a small little weird place that we have mm. I mean you come to it and it's literally like the gym from Rocky you know you're like uh ooh, this is it you know yeah this is the room you know where it all goes down but it's it's I love that about it that it's so unpretentious and it really was never about like a flashy building with a cool I mean I wish you know yeah I wish I was had some old 
dilapidated structure in Italy that looked like it was a th- it was a thousand years old. You know, I, there's there's visions of what I think a school should look like, <laughs> and it took me like even this one's got way better than the ones I've been in. But but it was always Krista had to hear it for years. Like oh god, this would make the best school. Oh, this would be everywhere I went in the world. Oh <laughs> my god, this building. Oh, if I could just make this a school, you know. I, and she still has to hear it. I was just in a, a trip where we were in Nevada City or something, and there's all these old dilapidated brick buildings that, you know, like from the gold rush at time period or something. It was such a cool old town. I'm like, oh, that makes such a cool mm-hmm. school. But anyway, um, I get off on, you know, squirrel. But anyway, we'll get back to focus. So um, you're now, in your fifth year, you're starting to teach. Um, you've had a few, you're just getting really into teaching. I mean, we're just starting to, you know, have you carry classes and stuff. And I think you could have, even a, a little earlier, but I just wanted you to not have that like jarring, like jumping into having to teach a class like too early. Mm-hmm. I mean, we used to co-teach for a couple of years, you know, before people would try to carry one, but that's gotten a little bit more fast tracked because a lot of you have had a lot better education than like Eric did, for example. When I made Eric, when I, when I had Eric step into teaching, I mean, he was so raw. I mean, it was so early for him. Yeah, you know, we probably interviewed him sometime talking about that, but it was, it's almost comical, you know, it's like, oh, you're teaching quick sketch. He's like, what? You know, I've been here like, like time out. No, but he jumped, he jumped in, you know, and has been here ever since doing it. So I think, um, I'm really excited to see where all this takes you. Uh, I, th- I know it's going to be, uh, you know, really in- instrumental part of your development. And, um, my wishes for you is just that, you know, like it has with all the other teachers that it becomes a really lifelong passion for you. Cause I think you have so much to contribute to the students. I mean, I'm just getting to know you too. Like, like I wish I had more time in classes with you. I just don't teach as much as I used to. Mm. And so for me to get to know you or Alana or Evan or Trav has been a unique situation because, you know, he stepped into so much more than just teaching. Um, so I have so much respect for anybody that will go on this wild journey with me because it's, it's a little nutty, you know? And, and I always... I'm so respectful and thankful for people that will um, see enough in the vision of the school to say, yeah, I want to be a part of that and, and contribute something because I don't know what you're going to contribute yet, but I know it's going to be cool. I know it's going to be unique. I want it to be both of those things. And I have no preconceived ideas of what that's going to be other than you'll have to show me, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I just know I have a good feeling about it, you know? <laughs> so for me, it's just more like um, that love and feeling and passion and, and, and uh, the school is a special place. There aren't many places like it. I've looked all over. Hard to duplicate, very difficult to mimic um, because there is such a rawness about it and, and an authenticity about it that was really what it was about. It was about getting a bunch of, you know, kind of misfit toys together and let's see what we can, how we can change the world and have fun with it, you know, and bring some cool stuff into it, right? And just have fun, you know? And that's what I wanna bring more into it too is the fun. So mm. not so much of the rigidity uh, that has been kind of, we've been known for, you know? Um, but I do think I, you know, that'll always be there cause it's a strong, hard system and there's no way to learn it other than through, you know, structure. Sure. It's, it's, it's it, you know, but the rhythm of it. So in closing, I guess, you know, what I really wanted to accomplish here, and I'm talking probably more than I should, but is that for those of you who are wanting to come to the atelier that are wanting to step a foot in, you know, these are the, teachers you're going to be hopefully running well you're going to run into when you get here because they're going to be teaching a lot of the fundamental head drawing fundamental figure drawing classes like that kira is going to teach uh she's got a great affinity for gouache and painting as well so hopefully blossom into a really good painting teacher as well illustration teacher down the road maybe or something but it'll just be natural steps but um next term i think we'll teach gouache together Mm -hmm. portrait which will be a lot of fun she's teaching uh gouache fundamentals right coming up here uh, this next term, which is a new class, which is a baby steps into gouache because we really kind of just throw people in the deep end and say, you're gonna paint a portrait now, good luck, you know, here we go. And it's, it's, it's hard, you know, so maybe painting some cubes, some value scales, getting used to how the paint dries, getting used to these idiosyncrasies of that medium before you start jumping into painting anything tangible. Mm-hmm. It would be, uh, and so again, I'm really excited to have you on board. Is there anything you would like to share on completing just chatting with you a little bit <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to put you on the spot but um yeah. maybe what students would want to what you would want to you know what you're and it's a big quite you know but like what what, what do you want to bring to teaching that you feel 
might be something you would like to contribute, you know, at this point, you know, to a new student coming in? Like, what would you want to tell them? You know, like if there was a new student that said, I'm thinking of taking your class and I'm coming in, what, you know, and they're very, t you know, maybe they're very nervous about it. Mm -hmm. What would you say based on your experience of coming in and having taken that jump and that step into being here? What would you, what would you tell a new student? Uh, I think I would tell a new student it's scary and it's hard work. Um, but it's fulfilling work and you have to just keep showing up and learn how to endure and get that work done but also by having fun with it and finding the fun with it and making it kind of like a game and or a puzzle you've got to solve um, and eventually it's not just oh, I'm putting all the work in to get the fundamentals you know I'm just to get to my goal but it also becomes a part of your life that uh, is fulfilling and just as enjoyable as uh, the more fun aspects of art. Yeah, yeah, it's good. You know, because again, I think the old cliche it is the journey, not the destination. I mean, mm. it's so. I mean, but all those cliches come from something, right? I mean, they come from people that have learned that it's more about the journey than it is the destination. So I think making it fun, knowing it's going to be hard. That's one thing I've always been very, I think, honest about. Is this is not an easy thing to learn how to do, but what really rewarding in life is. Mm. You know, I mean, it's just sooner or later, no matter what, if you want to surf well, you want to play an instrument, you want to be an elite athlete, you want, if you want to be elite at anything or really good at anything, you're going to hit head on into the monotony, the regular, you know, day to day grind and getting through, you know, that, that getting for learning to love that process of showing up and doing it with hopefully a good attitude, you know, not like kicking and screaming or complaining or oh poor me this is so hard you know all that kind of stuff because it's so easy to 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 step into that kind of mindset and i think it's really about can you have some panache and grace as you go through this process and actually fall in love with it mm -hmm. for all the turmoil and the hard and the sweat and tears and all the stuff that comes along with it that's life and that's the beauty of life right so sure. you guys thank you for joining me again and this is really just about introducing kira one of our newest instructors to the atelier and welcome and i hope we have many years of cool conversations and we'll circle back around maybe in a year and touch base again with uh, everybody as they start venturing into their work careers and starting to take that path we'll get a little deeper into how does that feel you know we'll keep doing check-ins with all the teachers we haven't gotten to do that because in the past there wasn't an avenue like youtube or instagram to even do this with so it's so fun to get to again start to share more uh, aspects and dimensions of the atelier with all of you and we hope that you'll excuse me feel confident enough to come in take a class and just try it or try the online and try it for a month try the streaming see what you think about it try all those things and try other programs as well you know and find the ones that resonate the most with you and I hope we we will be that for you but if we're not then much well wishes on your artistic journey forward you know and 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 hoping that you find um, your bliss or your your voice in all the and all of this because it is a really worthwhile uh, pursuit the pursuit of bringing beauty into the world and uh, Lord knows we need more of it so um, you know hopefully you can be part of the the you know the person that brings that beauty to the to the to the masses or the viewers or to your collectors or whoever it is maybe thanks a bunch have a good one take care.